Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Uh, my name is Diaid. I'm the business director for SunGrow Middle East and uh, North Africa. So today I will just go through um, a small brief for uh, SunGrow in Middle East, and then I will just take some time for the roadmap for our innovation in uh, the utility inverters. So starting from uh, the introduction about SunGrow, so SunGro have been founded in 1997, and we are a 100% bankable company. So we are considering the last four or five years um, uh, the number one fi uh, in financing projects. So that all comes from uh, how bankable the company is and how we are reflecting that on the project which we are uh, working on. So, um, According to Bloomberg, that we won it in the last three years to be the top bankable company. And I think for the, this year as well, we are just going to be, for the year number four, that's to be the top bankable between the inventor manufacturing as well. So for our prison in, in, uh, in the region, we are existing in more than 150 countries, and we have installation up to date around 224 gigawatts of uh, installation. So the only last year of the shipments is around 47 gigawatt of shipments, which is uh, making us, as per IH Market uh, report, as the number one of uh, supply and inverter in the world. So in Middle East, as we are speaking about Middle East and Africa right now, we have a five service point and two local warehouses achieving a 58% of the market share. So as of the last year that we awarded a lot of utility projects, which made us to go for the service points to increase it as per the countries, which we are having so many utility projects. So it's a, a witness from our side to to make sure that we are having an after sales and an after sales team to provide the full support to our customers and to make sure that they have all their needs and they have all their issues had been solved, especially when we are talking about utility projects, which is more than six gigawatt in our region. So our top uh, uh, our total production is around 140 gigawatt. This 140 gigawatt have been produced in uh, three regions. So we have our China factory, which is 120 gigawatt, and we have a 10 gigawatt factory, which is in India, and another 10 gigawatt factory, which is in Thailand. So this is actually our gross from the last year in revenue in appellions as well as in the capacity as per gigawatt. So from, 20, uh, from 2010 till 10, 2021, we have a 40% uh, gross in, in, um, in our revenue, which is showing that we are a steady, stable companies, which is very important, as you know, that's for the financing projects to have a strong bankable company with the steady states of revenue, especially as we know right now, my, my colleagues are here from the development and they were talking about the challenges of the, the, the PPAs and the warranty, which is you need a company to stay with you the 25 years of operation of the project which you are handling. So just to make ourselves stable in the market, that we are only focusing on the solar inverter. We are a power conversion company and we are not dedicated to any other sides of business which give us the strength to, to make sure that we will stay in the market for long and to have a stable operation with a stable and step up revenue to make sure that we are a trusted partner with our partners which work from the development side. On the other hand, from the shipments, we already estimated chip for the 2021 for a 47 gigawatt of the inverters. As I said, it had been released publicly the last uh, month, I believe so, according to the report from IHS. So all the data which we are talking today, it's available as a, we are a public listed company. So all of our revenue data, our shipment data, so it's all available as per report or for Bloomberg or by IHS, so you can just validate the operation. So for utility projects and for utility products, we tried 
to lead the market from this perspective. So we just came up with the latest innovative solution, not only to have up-to-date solutions, but we try to make the variety, just to make sure that our portfolio and our profile will cover the whole range and different schools of selection from the BV utility. So for the roadmap for our product from 2019 to 2023, we have our central inverter, SG3125, uh, and we have our string inverter, 250. So from the 2020 till 2024, we came up with a modular solution, which is something to reduce the gap between the string inverter and the central inverter, which is one plus X modular, and our new solution, which is an upgrade for our SunGrow 250, which is the 320. It's a string inverter, but it's in a bigger size. And I will just come to speak after that about why we already upgrading, what's the benefits of having this upgrade for a bigger size of inverter than our 250. And the roadmap for 2025, we are just going for a small power focus, 1.25 to 10 megawatt station MVBS, and our SunGrow 500HX, it's in R&D stage right now as, a, as the biggest string inverter in the world. So usually the, 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 the selection is always having a challenge. It's having a schools when it comes from the development side. So the developers is always trying to have the struggle or the challenge. Either we are going for a string inverter or we are going for a central inverter. So the, the question here is, as I said, to lead the market, you have to have the complete range. You have to get the variety. So your portfolio will be a complete portfolio. It's covering all the challenge. So if we are talking about the larger scale utility with a flat terrain, most of the development and most of the developers just prefer to go for a central inverter. That's we have our central solution is existing which is central 6.25 and 8.85 MV, and the, as I said, the modular 3125 Sangro uh, inverter. So when you go for the regular terrain and you need multiple MBBT or you are in a remote area, some other schools which they prefer to go for a string inverters, which it can be an easier for operation and maintenance, and it can be an easier for the benefits of having a multiple MBBT to give them the maximum OPEX and CAPEX which they can achieve during the feasibility study and simulation of the project. So this is actually, as I said, it's our upgrade for the 250 HX. So we have our 320, which is, as we know, that's by logic when you just go higher in terms of the inverter capacity from the uh, 250 to the 300. So you will use less number of inverters as per string, and you will use less number of the blocks, which is the MVPS stations, which you will get it, which it will have directly an, an impact on the levelized cost of energy. Then the second things in the upgrade, it became more safety because it can hold up to two strings per MPPT, and it's having a 24 hours of real-time ACTC isolation. So the multidimensional integration, as Marwan was talking right now, and he said that the technology of the modules today that's started to take two schools. One of the modules manufacturing decided to go for the 210 mm, and the other school has decided to keep up with the 182 uh, mm. As we are all know from the technical perspective, when, we, when the module is getting higher more than the 50, then this differentiation started to happen uh, in our industry. So the inverter had as well to be updated and to give the space for the people either from the EPC or from the development to have the luxury of choosing which module he can do that because some of these modules is high in voltage and low in current, which is the vice versa from the other modules, which is high in current and low in voltage. 
Each one of these modules is having their benefits, is having their advantage, and this advantage at the end is the call of the economy of generation and economy of selection for the developer, but from our perspective as well, as I said, for leading a market, you have to get the variety, your portfolio should be completed, and you have to get all the range of the product which should allow the EPC, the developer, the stakeholders just to be able to choose what can suit them and what can fit of what they are choosing to uh, their operation. So we came up with the two option of uh, MPPT, which is the 320. It's not a customized, it's just option one. It's related to the MPPT current for each uh, option one or option two of inverter. It will utilize and will give you the most economy solution when you are using either the 210 mm or using 182 mm from the modules. So at least you will not criticize of having any mismatch losses on the MPPT size or you don't need to reduce the number of modular per string. So it will have the luxury for the person who is going to select either to choose between MPP2, MPPT for option one, which can use 80 to 182 cell or the 210. Definitely, the, the more function comes, especially which we are seeing now from the panel discussion and the challenge is going to get more on the BV, then the integration of the BSS became something essential, especially most of the markets right now is going for the BSS solution for the great support or for any different kind of application for the battery storage. So the inverter should be ready for a, an instant uh, 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 integration with the BSS. From this case as well, that's our inverters, either the central or the string solution is ready for direct integration with the ESS solution, which it can be for the future operation if you need to extend or to increase the capacity for, for it. This is actually, that's how the system can look like. Then this is our new modular, which I said it's reducing the gap between the string inverter and the central inverter, which is something in between. So the fight is always to go string or to go central. We came in between, like for example, when the cars, there is a four by four cars, which is having its own application, and there is the sedan car. But some in between, like a middle class, some people need a bigger car, but they don't need the legacy or they need the luxury of having a four by four. So the modular design is something in between the string inverter and the central inverter, which can reduce the gap between the selection, which can, as I said, to reduce a little bit of the challenge, either going for a central or going for a solution. The modular design is a very flexible design. Each modular of these four modulars is 1.1 mega. It can be integrated together up to eight modular together, which it can co connect 8.8 .8 mega. So it's a flexibility of the design, and it's very convenient having the same option of a string because you will have a multiple MBBT in each modular of this. So you got a, a multiple MBBT, not as the central inverter with single MBBT. Then it's as well, it's an easy replacement in case of OEM. So you just can replace one of the modular and just get it easy. So even if you are in a remote area or an open area, then the OEM, it will be an easy way. So it as well as giving the great support as if the central inverter and it's doing as well like a cost saving on the CAPEX and OBEX level. So this is how the modular system design and as well it's having the integration as well for the battery storage solution. So it's already made for any future connection of the battery storage it can be done. So then there is this, like the modular design, it gives the efficiency of the O&M up to 70%. The, heat, the yield increases, thanks for the MPPT, by 95%. And as per the spare parts as well is reduced because you have a very modular design, which you can even replace the units one by one. So it's IB65, and as you see, it's a very small size, and it's having a heat dissipation. We, I can just like share with you some of the technical information separately after this session when we will get the, the, the data for that. 
So this is actually, as I said, the three solution which you have, the string, and you have as well the modular, and you have the central solution, which it makes which application do you want, which function do you want, and it will be based on that. You can choose actually what can suit you. As I said, that's when there was no modular design in between, people decided to go for something that's called virtual central, which is we already made that in 2017 and 2019. We operated the two projects, and we find that there is advantage and disadvantage for using a virtual central. But then we just came up with an idea, why to use a central in a virtual central? So in case of you need a central, either go for central. In the case of you go for a string, you go for a string. But what is in between? We came up with the modular one plus x to just eliminate the idea of having a virtual central inverter because in this case you didn't get either the benefits from a string or the benefits from central. This is actually the two projects I spoke about was 2017 and 2019 where we tried to implement the idea of having a virtual central which we find out that it's better to come up to the market with a modular design than having the central making it a virtual central uh, design. So this is actually the selection guide, which is everybody is having to consider when they are going through it, is our CapEx and OPEX yield and the great support. So this is the three major factors which makes anyone decided to select which inverter I'm going to use, which inverter will be suitable for the function and application which I'm using. So this is actually the, the four main pillars which we have to consider, either if you are using the string or you are using the central. And as I said, it's case by case. When you get the project and you study where is the location, how the terrain looks like, is it flat or a hilly terrain, then it comes up with output for all these numbers, which gives you a feasibility on how much you are going to save in the CapEx and OPEX, how the yield will be have impacted on selection of this one, and as well the grid support function, which function I need out of all the function of the grids. So this is actually our project reference for the last year. It's a six gigawatt being installed in, um, in Middle East. So we have a Qatar Al Kharsa project, which is 800. In Oman, we have Amin is 100 mega, and we have Ebri 2 is a 500. In, in UAE, we have Dewa, which is 900, and we have, as well with the guys, uh, with Roman and the team, we have Al Dafra, which is 1,500, which is a string inverter, by the way. Then we have Sudar, uh, which is 1,500, uh, 1, it's a central. In Egypt, we have Komombo 200, Bimban 100, and 142. In Algeria, there is one project 168 which from the reference list which you are seeing here, that you see a variety, it's having a central and string solution. So it's, it's as I said in the early beginning, the main message I said that we are completing the portfolio to make sure that we will serve what the 